you don't know the impact of these things and what they know, I still not figured this out. People always wondered, how do you survive? In any season you go, you manage to stay there for two, three weeks and come back. Approximately about three-fourths of a liter it would take. You just drink that, that's the food. And uh, you are so energized means you don't need anything else for the whole day. We have forgotten that soil is the greatest and the most complex and sophisticated living system, not on just the planet, in the universe. It is not just on this planet, in this universe, in the known universe, we do not know anything like the topsoil of this planet. That's how complex and sophisticated it is. And uh, it is fantastic partnerships between various species and how they function and the whole chemistry of the planet is managed by them. But in many, many people call this as dirt. If that is dirt, you and me are dirt bags. Hello? <laughs> so, unfortunately, we are treating living things as inanimate things. Even inanimate things need to be treated with respect. But unfortunately, living entities we are treating like this because somebody has put this idea in our head that every other creature is here only to serve the human beings. I have spent lots of time in the jungles of India. I have spent so much time observing all the different creatures, not just the big ones, the small ones. Because the crickets, the grasshoppers, the ants, termites, you better know who they are. Because, uh, you know, I've been in the jungles, I've had close encounters with tigers, I've very close encounters with elephants, and the Indian wild buffalo is a terror, but I've been very close around them. After all that, when you come out of the jungle after two, three weeks, the only thing you really remember is the insects. <laughs> really. You don't know the impact of these things and what they know, I still not figured this out. They'll be going, they'll be going. Exactly, at, you know, especially in the rainforest in the south, exactly at 2.30 in the morning, chuck, they'll stop. Within 30 seconds, another group starts off. <laughs> they'll go on for hours. Every day, I'm just looking at the watch, exactly at 2.30 in the morning. What are they doing? They know something that you and me have not figured out, all right? I'm saying without a clock, without anything, they know time to the second. How? But they know. As the birds know how to, you know, they got their own GPS, insects got their own time clock. And exactly they know and uh, if you just observe them, you know today it's going to rain. I am there in the jungle without any equipment, all I am, except what I am wearing, there's nothing else. So, rain is an important part <laughs> because if it starts raining in these southern Indian jungles, it can rain for three days non-stop, okay? So you better find a place where uh, your bones will get wet, it's like that. So, if you just observe the insects, they are all preparing for the rain, nothing, no cloud in the sky. But I learn to trust them. If I watch them, I know it's going to rain means it's going to rain. When they say it, it's true. Meteorologists, the, you know, the, the only two professions in the world where you can be wrong fifty percent of the time is, is either you are a weatherman or you are an astrologer. <laughs> I heard that you guys are all soaked in honey. Let me tell you my honey story. Can I tell them a honey story? Yes, please. Story? <laughs> I'm, I look, I'm, I'm just like them. I'm listening. I'm enjoying <laughs> myself. Please, do go. So, when I was uh, getting lost in the jungles of India, mm, the only food that sustained me largely was honey. I ate other things that I don't want to talk to you about, but <laughs> uh, largely honey. People always wondered, how do you survive? In any season you go, you manage to stay there for two, three weeks and come back, how do you do it? 
A uh, simple my trick was normally uh, we were riding a, a Czechoslovak, no, Czech Republic uh, motorcycle at that time, okay? <laughs> These days everything is sensitive, you know, you can't say anything <laughs> as it was. You can say Thomas here. <laughs> <laughs> so we were riding a Java or a SD, so it has a petrol tube, normally you need seven, eight inches of petrol tube, but I always put extra, about fifteen, sixteen inches of petrol tube, because it gets hard, you, have, you can keep cutting it and putting it on, the rubber gets hard. And this is also for my honey, so when I park the motorcycle in the forest and cover it up with all branches and stuff, I pull off the petrol tube and put it in my pocket and go. So I climb up the tree and the, the hill, uh, I don't know what kind of honeybees you have here, I have no experience of this. There we have what is called as black bees. They are this big, about one and a half inches long. And uh, honey is fantastic in the Western Ghats because the variety of vegetation there is uh, probably like no other in the world. The number of species of plants there is like nothing else in the world. So, I go there and uh, these huge hives, they built it on that kind of branch where the sloth bears cannot get. A sloth bear weighs approximately seventy to eighty-five kilograms. So, the bees are so smart, they will build it in a place where the bear cannot get to it. Just on that kind of branch, where the bear will not be able to go because the branch will bend. So I'm just around little over seventy kilograms. So I crawl up that, go close to it, stick my pipe into the hive and drink it up. I drink up about three-fourths of a liter of honey and for the day I'm settled, you know. So I just lived on honey for many weeks and uh, there are… there are uh, tribes called honey shepherds in India, they're called Jainukurubas. So I went and lived with them and uh, they just live on honey. Every day from morning to evening, just their bamboo glass is about this tall, approximately about three-fourths of a litre it would take. You just drink that, that's the food. And uh, you are so energized means you don't need anything else for the whole day. You're climbing trees, you're doing all kinds of crazy things, but it takes care of you <laughs> one liter of honey. So I'm just telling you because I heard uh, honey ke beekeeping is a big deal here. Yeah. That's… that's probably one of the smartest things that you've done in your country. It will pay. It will pay in future. Not just with honey, it will pay in many ways. <laughs>